Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the farm. This is Lisa and today we are participating in Emergency 24. This is a collaboration hosted by Natasha at the Budget Preppers and Tanya at Lowe's Family Adventures. There's going to be a playlist as well as a giveaway live and I will put an image up here for the prizes but we thank the donors that were so generous. The live will be on April 6th at 6.30 p.m. So be sure to check that out. I'll have all the information in the description box for you. But today we are making scalloped potatoes in a jar. To have them on hand in the pantry and be able to just add water and a little butter and we're good to go. So whenever I do a meal in a jar video, I've done them before, people often say, well, I don't have a freeze dryer, I can't afford it, or I don't have a dehydrator. You don't need one. You can buy dehydrated or freeze dried items and make these meals in a jar ahead of time and have them all ready in your pantry to go at a moment's notice. So one of my tips for you is peruse uh, Amazon or other places for the 10 pound cans of food, I happen to have August and Farm, uh, 10 pounds can of potatoes and they're dehydrated, but there are so many options to be able to stock your pantry and I only buy it when it's on a good sale and I snatch them up. So come on along, let's get going. So here are the ingredients that you'll need. Sea salt, black pepper, chives, dehydrated potato slices, minced onion or onion powder, I have a little bit of both, ground mustard, cornstarch, all-purpose flour, non-fat dry milk, and I have my jars. Half a cup of milk powder, two tablespoons of flour, two tablespoons of cornstarch, one teaspoon of onion powder or two teaspoons of onion flakes, half a teaspoon of chives. I think I like a little more chives. Half of a teaspoon of mustard powder. A teaspoon of salt. an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, and we're going to give this a whisk. Now that is for one jar, I'm going to be making several. So, but I'm going to show you the one jar for now. I'm going to set aside the sauce and get the potatoes open. There's the potatoes. I apologize, my clip got corrupted. So I didn't get to show you filling the jars, but I took the potatoes, put them in the jar here using my canning funnel, and then I put the powder on top and then settled it down. I used a jar that had measurements on the side, like this one here. And so I knew to put three cups of potatoes in there. That easy. Let me make some more. Be sure when you're taking your potatoes out of the can, 
You do not pack in the oxygen, oxygen absorbers because they are no longer good and you don't want them in there. These are the ones that came in the can with the potatoes. So for the ones I'm storing more long-term, I am putting an oxygen absorber in there with them. And what I will do is put a lid on, back seal it, and label it, and put it in the pantry. So what I had made three full jars and a partial jar, and then I'm gonna put two in my pantry. So let me vac seal those first. So now some people would put the powder in a baggie. I don't wanna do the added expense. You could make jars of the powder separate and just add what you needed to make the dish. I'm just gonna give it a shake. Everything settles to the bottom. And I'm gonna pour the potatoes gently in the bottom. and then put the powder on top. And I'm gonna boil two and three quarter cups of water. And I have two tablespoons of butter just diced up in little tiny pieces. Give it a good mix so all the lumps are out. Oh, it smells good already. Now, if you wanted to make this au gratin, you could add, I think it is a half a cup of cheddar powder or fresh grated cheese, whatever you prefer. Again, just making sure the lumps are out and I have my oven preheated to 350. And I'm just gonna put my butter on top. You could also use butter powder if you wanted to. I have a large can of it, but I really didn't want to open it. So I'm using regular butter. Just sprinkling it all around. And we're gonna pop this in the oven for 45 minutes and I will bring you back. I just took them out of the oven and I cooked them for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes longer than it said, but we're over 5,000 feet, which is pretty normal. But I'm gonna let it sit for five minutes and get it plated up. So there you go. Looks so good. Oh wow, this is really good. Definite keeper. Easy peasy. You can also broil these for a little bit at the end if you wanted it more brown. I think they turned out perfect. 
So full credit to the recipe author, and I put that link down in the description box down below. And the other thing is, is they recommend using this within 12 months, um, which is not a problem for us, but sometimes things can go longer, sometimes not. So you have to do your own research and use your own judgment. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Um, easy peasy, quick side dish that could have been a lot more complicated had you had to make it from real potatoes, you know, cutting them up and peeling and all that. So there's a great example of things you can have on your pantry shelf to make good food convenient. So uh, be sure to check out the giveaway. Be sure to leave a heartfelt, thoughtful comment on the videos because you may win. So thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.